here at Sun Chemical in Midsummer Norton. This facility is dedicated to ink development for the digital printing market. And we're going to talk to Sun Chemical experts about those key digital print applications and where they see key growth in the market. So we're here at the state-of-the-art digital facility in Midsummer Norton. So maybe we could talk a little bit about what areas are covered by Sun Chemical and where you see areas for digital print growth. Well, Sun Chemical has activity in almost all areas of digital print. In fact, we've been developing digital solutions on this site for over 30 years and lots of uh, inkjet activity. So we've got a legacy business in sort of things like coding and marking and wide format graphics. But of course, we're developing things for future applications as well. So we're investing heavily into uh, the world of, of packaging, where Sun Chemical is a, a strong player in the analog world and, uh, and labels and also textiles and some industrial applications too. And the world of print and the world of digital print is certainly growing. Absolutely. Simon? Yeah, and I think where we see a lot of growth at the moment is in uh, aqueous inkjet um, to complement our, our pretty big UV business. Um, so we're developing a lot of strategies around aqueous to support markets like uh, packaging, which is clearly growing in both flexible corrugated and, and folded carton, but also in the textile sectors and some of the more niche areas like printing onto food, print electronics and, and decor markets. Fantastic. And why is ink selection such an important part of delivering a successful digital print project? Ultimately, the ink is the one part of the digital print process that ends up on the final product and has an impact on how that product performs. So it's really important that we get not only the colour right, but also how it works together with the substrate, its shelf life in the market, how the colour reacts to abrasion or, or light fade and then also obviously it's compliance in the different markets so when we're talking about food packaging or printing onto textile for garments to be worn it's really important that the chemistry that we're applying is complementary to those applications and that we adhere to the market compliance needs. People don't necessarily are concerned by how things are printed but if the print doesn't perform for them if it rubs upon their fingers or it fades within a few months then obviously they're quite upset so we have to take the end applications into consideration but also you have to recognise and, and respect the need for the actual print process. Inkjet printing is a very complex environment in itself, so we have to work very closely with the people that build the machines and the suppliers of print heads and curing and, and drying technology, because the whole um, arrangement has to come together so that it prints perfectly on day one and throughout its shelf life, and then the product in the end application also has to meet some needs. So from sort of beginning to the end of its life cycle, the ink has a lot of demands to deliver. And we talked there about the wide range of markets that you cover. Do different markets bring different challenges? Yes, of course. I mean, every end application has its own set of requirements with regards to you know, how much rub resistance or light fastness or bending and folding. The good thing at Sun Chemical, and certainly within our inkjet development, we've got a very wide portfolio of technologies, um, but many different options of chemistry for, for UV and water-based and solvent, even some hot melt wax and some really niche applications. So trying to understand what the end use applications are um, are important so that you don't get sort of caught up into the actual print process and making sure that you can meet those end application needs. Particularly, we're well blessed in the fact that we've got a lot of analog business and we can dip into those different laboratories around the world and understand what those certain application specifications are, what they do historically for the, to reach those market needs and bring that forwards into our inkjet laboratory and becomes part of our R&D process. One of the things that really differs a lot between applications is, is the compliance and the in-country needs. So where we're really lucky at Sun Chemical is, is, is having a back integration with a, with a big regulatory department that look at all the chemistries of the inks, but also in, in the final use application to understand the product safety requirements for different markets and different territories around the world to make sure that we're really delivering ink solutions that are absolutely fit for purpose. About the evolution of, of digital print, how has the user profile of a digital print customer changed in recent years? The type of person doing the printing in some ways hasn't changed, but in, in other ways has really evolved. So, of course, we, we work a lot with, with OEMs to make solutions together with them for the market for standalone printing systems. And that, that may be in a print house, but more and more we're, we're finding that bigger companies and brands are investing in that technology to bring print into their production environment so that it's, it's a real big part of their process as well. So the types of customers, as the technology of Inkjet has evolved, the type of customer has, has kind of evolved with it. It's a great place to be. I mean, Inkjet is now so highly evolved. It can almost address any market, you know, with the right resolution, the right speed, the right widths. You know, the, the ability to build a machine to serve those markets is, is possible. And sometimes it's the chemistry that has to unlock the potential of that. 
the, if the ink doesn't perform for the end application, then the, the process doesn't work. So as Inkjet has now become more capable, you know, it's not just small machine builders, it's becoming you know, much more prominent in terms of manufacturing and in terms of you know, production printing with regards to, to um, packaging, for example, where the machines are getting bigger, wider, faster, and getting much closer to the analog world and doing a lot more that people didn't think was possible 10 years ago. So the type of customer has changed a little bit. Well, certainly there's still be some people building big machines and there's still a, a need to serve those, but certainly the, the, the flexibility and the adaptability of inkjet, it can be put into not just a replacement technology to doing the same as what analog was doing in the same facility, but it can go a bit closer to consumption, a bit further down the supply chain. You know, people that would buy print now could integrate a printer into their systems and actually print on demand for themselves. So it's a lot more versatile than people sort of take for granted. So inkjet can be a very small printer or a very big printer and everything in between. And the type of customer can change, but I think the versatility of inkjet will, will shine through. It's not just classic machine builders, classic OEMs. It's a lot more versatile than that. So we have to respect and um, work with many different partners going forwards. Thank you. Yeah, it seems like a, a really exciting time and a fantastic facility you have here. So thank you so much for, for having us. Pleasure. Thank you. <laughs>